Welcome to Stop Fake, the place where we set the record straight on fakes about Ukraine. I'm Fulbright scholar Cynthia Sulash with Stop Fake's latest dissection of Russian alternate reality. This week's disinformation menu brings you the following. Spanish media again accuse Ukrainian footballer of Nazism. Separatists regain control of Advika, a town they have never held. And what is really causing Kiev smog? So let's get to the details. Spanish media are once again rife with stories accusing Ukrainian footballer Roman Zuzolia of Nazism. Stop Fake already debunked similar accusations six months ago, when Spanish media claimed that the Ukrainian national emblem on Zuzolia's t-shirt was a symbol of ultra-right radicalism and that Zuzolia's tattoos were signs of his sympathies for neo-Nazi ideology. These accusations come from Spanish football fans, the left-wing Bucaneros, group of the Rayo Vallecano football team ultras. Their February 2nd inflammatory tweet was retweeted nearly 2,000 times. The ADRV football platform called Zuzolia a known Nazi and declared that he actively supported radical right groups and financed fascist battalions. The symbols which he wears are proof of this, they claim. The controversial Bucaneros group and ADRV made these claims against Zuzolia in an effort to block Rayo Velicano signing a contract with the Ukrainian footballer. Rayo Velicano management asked Zuzolia to address the media's accusation. Zuzolia explained his position and reminded the team's leadership that he had already been branded a neo-Nazi for wearing a t-shirt bearing the Ukrainian national symbol, the trident. Because of these accusations, Zuzolia did not remain with the Rayo Velikano club. Ukraine's symbol, the trident, has never been a symbol of Nazism and has been a Ukrainian national attribute from the time of the medieval Kievian Rus state. Yet Zuzolia is being accused of being a Nazi for wearing the Ukrainian equivalent of the Union Jack or the American Eagle on his t-shirt. The sports publication Marka also inaccurately claimed that Zuzolia's fund, Narodna Armia, supported Ukrainian paramilitaries. Narodna Armia representatives explained to Stop Fake that Zuzolia's fund supports the Ukrainian armed forces with food, clothing, and technical equipment. The fund also provides support for families of the military. There are no rogue military formations in Ukraine. All volunteer battalions organized after Russia's annexation of Crimea in 2014 and the onset of the separatist war in eastern Ukraine are incorporated into defense or interior ministry structures. In 2016, Ukraine's defense ministry recognized Narodna Armia's volunteers' contributions with a special commentation. Russian Defense Ministry television channel Zvezda declared this week that the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic had retaken Adievka, a town in Donetsk Oblast close to Russian separatist-occupied territory. Adievka has never been under separatist control. The town is part of Free Ukraine and under the control of their Ukrainian armed forces. Zvezda then declared that the Ukrainian military had resumed shelling Adievka, when it is in fact the Russian-supported separatists that have been incessantly firing at the town in recent days. Zvezda and other Russian media referred to Russian presidential spokesman Dmitry Preskov, and it appears declared the so-called Donetsk People's Republic retook Adievka. Later, they backpedaled the story, claiming that Pieskov announced that the separatist militias had pushed Ukrainian forces back to the demarcation line and that was in place prior to the current renewal of fighting, and that the Kremlin had incontrovertible evidence that it was Ukrainians who began attacking Adievka first. Ukraine's interactive war map, which is updated daily, shows that Adievka is under the control of the Ukrainian military. OSCE's Ukraine monitoring mission confirms this. Even separatist militants contradict these Russian media claims. Reports about separatist militia closing in on Adievka are not true, wrote one of the representatives of the DNR. The Ukrainian newspaper VSD published a story this week claiming that the recent smog enveloping Ukraine's capital city, Kiev, was caused by the city's power plants using low-grade coal. 
Viesti also claimed that the region where Kiev's number six power plant is located has a particularly acute smog problem. The city government, according to Viesti, explains that this is caused by the absence of wind rather than being dispersed Heavy soot is settling on the streets and buildings. Kiev authorities officially admitted that there is two to three times more sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere than normal, and this is caused by boiler emission, Viesti declared. Kiev's number six power plant does not operate with coal, it uses natural gas. The only power station using coal is located in Kiev's left bank, Darnitsa region. Stop fake asked the Kiev state administration to clarify the situation. City Council Deputy Advisor Yulia Gramotna told us at Stop Fake that no media had inquired about low-grade coal causing the recent smog. She assured that the exhaust generated by the city's only coal-burning plant in Darnitsa is in within normal range. Viestis claim that the Kiev administration has admitted that low-grade coal is causing the smog is inaccurate. Kiev authorities released a statement explaining that the most likely cause of the fog enveloping Kiev is the recent drop in temperature and an increase of humidity, which together with emissions and exhaust has caused the smoggy haze. That's it for this week. Beware of fakes. Be vigilant. If you spot any disinformation about Ukraine, send it to us for a truth autopsy. Remember, consuming fake news is not only bad for your health and your brain, it's bad for the psychological climate of society. So don't do it. I'm Cynthia Sulash, and this is Stop Fake. Thanks for watching.